So we see in our gospel continuing things to continue to get ratcheted up a little bit, uh, or a lot of it, as we approach Holy Week and our Lord's Passion and the, the grouping of the first reading with uh, the gospel in the book of Genesis is the call of Abraham, where God promises Abraham and his descendants a, a land. He promises um, to be a great name. He, he promises his divine favor to be upon Abraham and all of his descendants. If only he and his descendants would keep the covenant. And what do we see? Generation after generation, they don't keep his covenant. They don't keep his promises. And so God lays out all these things of the, the divine favor, the great name, the promises in the land. And it says, God also said to Abraham, on your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. And they don't. They break the covenant. And remember what a covenant is. A covenant's not a contract. A covenant is, like, is I will do for you what I said I would do for you, even when you don't do for me what you said you would do for me. And you see this in our response for Psalm, response of the first reading is, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. And it's even more than that, because Jesus comes and then offers, he, in the new covenant, he, he, he ratchets it up and he invites us into eternal life. And, you know, this eternal life, as he, he, he says the words which begins the, the, uh, the conflict here with the scribes and, and the Pharisees, he says, Amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. And he reiterates it and says, whoever keeps my word will never see death or, or will never taste death. And they bring up Abraham. And so what Jesus is doing, he's making the claim. He's saying that he goes before Abraham. He's claiming his divinity to which they say that's enough. Enough's enough. And they pick up stones to kill him. And I think, you know, we can, we can look at them and say, man, their lack of faith and them being blinded, like these knuckleheads, like why couldn't they just get it? So we have 2,000 years of hindsight 2020 where we look and say, like, how could, they're just a bunch of knuckleheads. But how do, how do we allow sin and our pride to blind us? And maybe specifically zeroing on Jesus's words there that began this whole dialogue of it saying, you know, uh, what was it? Whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Have I really surrendered fully to, to, to his words, all of his words? Have I really surrendered to the church, all of what the magisterium has taught? You know, as I'm, I don't know, as I'm getting older, a priest longer and longer, it's just, you know, I, I'm becoming more and more, it's more and more apparent that it really is, it really is all or nothing. Like in, in the move of, with like with integrity of just even who Jesus is, it's either he says he is who he says he is and he rose from the dead or he's not. And if he's not, if he didn't rise from the dead, forget it. Forget Christianity. But if he did rise from the dead and he did establish a church, it's like, Lord, your words, I will never taste death on a macro level, spiritual death, but also like little ways in which we, we don't follow his words. It leads to little deaths in our lives. It leads to the de deteriorating relationships. It leads to the inflation of the self and inflation of the ego. And so as we approach Holy Week, as we grow, grow, grow closer and closer to the, um, the passion, Lord, help me to be all in on you. Help me be all in on your words. Everything hinges on you. Help me not to be blinded by sin and to, move it, and to not move in that same space that the scribes and the Pharisees to reject you and to reject your words.